the near Tandon disaster. Now, those of you who know this channel know that until a couple of months ago, all the videos were equally harsh on Democrats and Republicans. You'll all be sick of my mentioning that George Washington and James Madison, otherwise known as the father of the Constitution, very emphatically criticized the very idea of parties. Why? Because of the temptation for one party to try to take full power. I think we've seen a little bit of that. This is a democratic republic, and we shouldn't accept that from either side. Power grabs are bad. And if you think about it, we shouldn't have any parties at all. In an earlier video, I pointed out that power grabs have nothing to do with government. If you aren't going to do anything useful as a senator or a congressman, what the hell is the use of having them at all? Just to gain power? Doesn't help us. Our founding fathers didn't form this nation so somebody could bully somebody else. Just the opposite for them after being bullied by the British. But I'm happy to return to expressing my complete disgust with the two-party system. And in this case, I'm actually going to criticize a Democrat. Yay. Okay. We're going through confirmation of Biden's picks. I was pleased to hear that even some of the more right-wing GOP members supported the general positive view of Merrick Garland. And it seems like they're going to confirm him. So as bad as things are, there does seem to be some room to meet in the middle. The big scandal of the day is, of course, Neera Tandon. Now, there is a point to be made that many people who have criticized her have said things as bad as her tweets. And I do mean as bad, or worse. But this takes us into the realm of whataboutism, a term that has come about in the last year. It essentially states that politician A is allowed to act like a horse's ass because politician B did the same thing. By saying that Republicans who live in glass houses should not throw stones at near a tandem is like saying that rudeness is okay, as long as the other side did the same thing. Now, I agree that those who have criticized her are not much better. But if something is wrong, it's completely wrong. What is even worse is that Biden himself has said explicitly that anyone who is a bully or rude or anything that would fall under the umbrella of acting like a snotty child would be asked to resign. Now, if we need to set standards for behavior after the four years of a previous administration, I believe it is very important for Democrats to stick to their standards Anything else would be seen as hypocritical. Which leaves us with another issue that has nothing to do with near at hand necessarily. It, it brought up by, this is brought up by the confirmation attempt, and it's sexism. Now, we've been through a number of powerful women in the last 20 years who have shown that they're not easily cowed by power. What I've noticed is they've drawn a lot of heat when I can't say they deserve it any more than the killer business politician men that I've seen for the last 50 years. What I've heard has left me speechless. I have people that I know personally who are afraid of Kamala Harris. I'm not talking about politics or anything she might do as vice president. But she can only do so much that anyone needs to be afraid of. I have heard men speak in ways that make anything she said sound like Bob Ross. So what do you think she's going to do? She's not a radical, but a cop who has put people in jail. Enough said. Neera Tandon doesn't get a walk. We've become far too tolerant of bullies 
and no one should be given a pass. Thank you for listening.